take a journey with me to explore other people's lives and their experiences. Let's allow that information to take us on a journey of questioning and self-reflection that can lead us to live our most passionate and joyful life. Let's take a journey now. Hello and welcome to Journey for Truth on webtalkradio.net. I am Tammy Urbanic, your host. Thank you so much for joining me. A new healing CD is out on the JonahLifeInstitute.com website. It's called The Splinter Effect. It helps you understand how just one person can create a significantly toxic environment and really begin to pull people down. So what do you do about that? How can you move beyond that? So listen to that CD and you can purchase that for $16 plus shipping at JonahLifeInstitute.com. On this week's show, my guest is Tim Braun. Uh, Tim works as a psychic medium, and he has appeared in 15 episodes of his own television show, Looking Beyond, that aired on the Cox Cable Network and guest starred on the TLC Network reality show. Tim, welcome. Thank you, Tammy. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you here and to discuss spirituality and, and what it is to be a medium and and how you can assist people to see beyond their own uh, illusion or limitations. So first, mm-hmm. can you define what is a psychic medium? Well, you know, I always tell my clients that, you know, um, all mediums like myself are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. And really what defines the medium is being able to see and hear and feel that of one in spirit that's coming through. You know, psychic is um, all about the now, the future, sometimes the past. Um, And yes, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. Interesting way Mm -hmm. to put it. Mm-hmm. So, and when oh, I do ahead. my work with yeah, when I do my work with my clients, um, if they want to have uh, more of a psychic reading, then I let them know to let me know before the sitting. But I, my gift, my forte is mediumship, and I've been doing this work since oh, for the last 22 years full time. Um, I've done now over 14,000. 500 individual sittings in this country and abroad, and I just love this work. It's tiring, but I really, really love this work. I always tell my friends and also my clients, I said, you know, police officers, every time that they go to work, they have the opportunity of getting shot, and firefighters, they have the opportunity of getting burned, and mediums every day, they get taxed. They get they get burnt out. They get tired. They feel the bullets. They feel the fire. They feel everything that that person's spirit um, brings through, and what we do is we bring through the evidence that actually shows that they are there and when I do my work with my clients I always tell them this is a sitting we sit with spirit and we see who comes in there's never ever any guarantees Tammy who can come through and any valid and legit legitimate medium would say the same thing Mm -hmm. it's a sitting we see who comes through and who doesn't you know sometimes the people that we really really want to come through sometimes they will stand stand back to allow someone else to come through that can offer more healing for what that person is going through at that time. Mm -hmm. Definitely, and I can see that, and I've experienced that in my own work, where if Mm -hmm. a person wants to uh, speak with a deceased individual, it is, it's never guaranteed. Um, Mm -hmm. As I'm sure you've experienced, you can never force anyone to come into your space to to participate in a session, Uh, but the work that I do is more with guides, and and that has always been a guarantee. A person's Mm -hmm. guides are always around to assist in that, but deceased people mm-hmm. are a little different. So, talk a little bit about um, your psychic work. Uh, so, do you have people who come to you saying, "I just want for you to use your psychic abilities"? Um, that's more on the rare side. Most of the time, 95, 90 to ninety-five percent of the time, people are coming strictly just for mediumship, um, and they want to find out, you know, more details on how their husband passed. Sometimes a mother will come in to see me, and this happened just a few years ago, where the mother thought that her son was murdered, and actually he committed suicide, and she found out later that the validation all came true based on what came through the sitting. Um, that it was that. Um, and so that right there in itself provided so much healing for that client. Um, but most of the time people come to see me strictly for mediumship. And I'd have to say 20, maybe 15, 20% of the time people are coming to see me for psychic, but I specialize more in mediumship. And how do they um, work with their own their own healing journey through the mediumship? Is it to assist in healing a relationship with that deceased person coming through, or is there something more to it? 
Oh, there's so many things. Sometimes a person will come through to express their apologies. Sometimes they'll come through to um, express their, their guilt or their remorse for how they treated their child or treated their spouse. Sometimes they'll come through, and this is what happens most of the time, is that they'll come through because they want to say, hey, listen, we're out of that body. We're no longer tied to that body anymore. We're no longer tied to that illness. And they bring so many different validations that come across that actually shows by names, by dates, by details, that it's actually them that proves to the clients, like, yes, that is my son or that is my husband. And that person is usually coming through to say, hey, listen, we're okay. We're around you. We hear you. We see you. But we're okay. Mm, that's wonderful. What if you have a person coming to you who, uh, well, you mentioned suicide a few moments ago, but what if you have someone coming to you and they want to connect with someone who did in fact take their own life or they died a very traumatic death through a murder or some sort of accident and, and you find that that person is, well, stuck mentally and emotionally? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll give my client tools in order to help release that person, to help, in a way, unstuck them. But when I do my work, I never know what's going to come through. You know, every day is a surprise to me because when I book my clients, I only have my assistant book their, their name, their first name, and their phone number just in case we need to cancel the appointment. But we do this as far as the sittings is that I would say the less the medium knows, the better. Because mm-hmm. when that person comes in for the sitting, all I want to know is their first name and how to greet them. Um, and I don't want to know any other information because the job is is to bring through the validations. And sometimes I see clients come see me and out of their nervousness, they'll sit down and they'll say, okay, we're just going to do a brief little meditation before we start. And then after that, we'll come through. And this has happened a few times where a person will say, oh, my gosh, I'm so nervous. I hope my mom comes through. She just died three months ago of breast cancer. And you think she's here? And I'm like, well, you know, um, let's see. But you've already given away some of the validations that could have come through. So I always tell my clients, but when you go to see a medium, you know, the less the medium knows, the better. If that medium is legitimate and valid, they will be able to bring through the information um, that come through that will be valid. Mm-hmm. Most Make definitely. Sense? Absolutely, absolutely. So what age did you realize that you had this ability? Um, well, I'm in my mid-40s now, and when I was about six years of age, um, that's when I realized that I was able to see spirit. But at that age of six, it scared the bejeebies out of me. And the reason why is because at that same time, my brother, who was and still is 18 years older than myself, was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Hmm. So when he was seeing things um, and he was being traumatized by these different things, um, his was more of an illness. But as a six-year-old, I didn't know that. So every time that I saw spirit coming through to me, I would actually look the other direction. So if I saw what, six, seven, eight years of age, if I saw someone off to the left of me in spirit, I would actually turn to the right. I would ignore them. And I did that until my early 20s. And I kept on like ignoring it. And looking back on that, that was actually um, really a big gift for me to do that because it strengthened the ability to tune out, to not focus in on that. So when I tuned out, I was strengthening the muscle not to focus in on spirit. And it wasn't until my early 20s when I had a dream to go to India to work with the late Mother Teresa. And uh, making a very long story short, I um, found myself on a plane, a jumbo jet to India, and I worked with Mother Teresa for about 10 days, hands-on with her. Um, But everything in that dream was more of a vision. Getting off the plane, the time I shook her hand, who was there shaking her hand, everything was there as it was when I actually did shake her hand when I got off the plane. So when that happened in my early 20s, I said to myself, well, gosh, you know what? I'm not losing my mind because I'm starting to get these dreams. They're all starting to come true. Well, let me kind of pay attention to spirit. Let me see what I see around me. And once I did, I opened up, and that's when it all just took off for me. Hmm. What about other people in your family? Do do they have or talk about seeing the non-physical? No. Um, my family is very religious. You know, I'm the youngest of six kids in a very, very traditional Catholic family, um, and we just don't talk about this. Um, and it's unfortunate because... Um, when we do this work, it's, there's so much healing that comes, comes through. And in our family, we just don't talk about that just because of the religion. So unfortunately, I don't have really a source of, of support in my family. When I 
first started doing this work years ago, I had to have friends and other mentors be a support for me so I could do this work. Now, that I find that interesting. So wouldn't um, a, a family or, or people in general who participate in the Catholic religion or religion in general, I mean, they believe in God, so they believe in spirit, they believe in, in uh, heaven, I would suppose. So why do you think it's so difficult to believe in the non-physical coming through to communicate? Well, you know, for my parents, Tammy, my parents were born in the 1920s, so they grew up old school, and very old school, very traditional, um, and going to psychics or mediums or Ouija boards or anything like that was not part of their belief system, so they, in a way, taught, as if I want to say the word trained, all their children to believe the same, but for me, I couldn't fall into that because what I was seeing was so real. Um, my mom, I have to say, is very psychic, but she won't tune into it because she feels that's a bad source. That's like it's not coming from a good source. But she, growing up, was so right on so many different things, and it's not the woman's intuition. She she was just very right on on things. Um, but she won't tune into it, and it's just her choice. That's their choices, and we just have to respect people's choices. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, sometimes when a person refers people to me, they say, "Oh, you know, they don't want to come see a medium. They don't want to do this." I says, "Don't push it, because you know what? They have to be wanting to do this. Um, everybody's wired differently, and everybody receives their own healing in different ways. Mediumship is just one of the ways to heal." Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. So, what about you? Said your brother, who was much older than you, that he mm-hmm. had um, paranoid schizophrenia. Yes, uh huh. And he's still alive. He, um, he's um, in the state of Arizona, um, and um, he has a social worker, and he's in government housing, and um, he has been taken care of that way. And it's unfortunate because his you know, um, illness turned into an illness where my gift turned into a very strong gift. And I always tell my friends, it's like, you know, there's a very fine line between genius and insanity. And in no way am I saying I'm genius. I'm just going to say that there's a fine line between losing your mind and keeping your mind. There's just a fine line there. And for me, I just focused in on the mediumship, which was a gift that was bestowed upon me from spirit years ago. So how do you define spirit world? Um, anything that's non-physical. So spirit world is when we make that transition. So our pets, our friends, our relatives, our loved ones, they all go to spirit world. And I look at it as it looks, it's more like a holding pattern until we choose to either reincarnate or we choose to wait for our loved ones to come over. But it's just, as I will say, the other side of the veil. And it's a very, very high vibration place. And... Um, when we come here to this planet, this is just more school for us. We're here to learn. And when we're done with this body, we go back home. That's basically all it is in a nutshell. Do you see different levels of the spirit world? I do, yes. Um, When I do my work, 90% of the time I can see how a mother and father will come in and the client will say, oh, I'm so glad my mom and dad are together. And I'm like, well, they are here together for you today. But when the sitting is over, they're going to go in different spaces. And sometimes that kind of concerns my client. And I say, well, listen, it's actually not a bad thing. It's kind of like, you know, your dad was kind of like more having fun in freshman year high school and your mom's now a senior. They're still in the same high school over on the spirit side. They can see each other in break. They can see each other in classes, but they're in two different levels. Um, and when I explain it to them that way, they, they get it. And they see sometimes how that relationship for the mother or father was a little bit more taxing for that parent. But um, I can see sometimes when a person is on a higher level when they come through, and it's about a feeling I feel. It's more of a lightness. When sometimes when a person comes through more heavier, um, that's they're a little more on a lower vibration, but nothing like hell or purgatory, which are more Judeo-Christian terms. It's just the lower energy. I agree. I, I've had different situations in which uh, different deceased will come through and they have more of a, a higher feeling or a lighter mm-hmm. feeling. They'll have, mm-hmm. uh, they'll offer information that carries um, a higher vibrational frequency versus mm-hmm. I've had individuals come through who carry a lot of anger. Maybe they're angry at the way they died. Maybe they're angry at their mm-hmm. life 
that occurred in the physical, mm-hmm. or maybe they're even angry with the person that is sitting mm-hmm. there. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, there are, and there's everything in between. So what I exactly. have always and determined look- is everyone's different in the non-physical, just like they are in the physical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when I um, do this work, I sometimes explain it to my clients is that, you know, there's in a way seven different levels on spirit side and at each level there's like nine different sections. So, you know, they're like grades and it's based on how you live your life and what you accomplish in this lifetime that puts you up to that higher level. Um, and it's all about service. When we're here, we're here to serve. There's no difference, Tammy, um, you know, to a medium, to a school teacher, to an auto mechanic, to a person who, you know, is a crosswalker, um, walks the kids across the crosswalk. There's no difference between all of us. The only thing is, is that what difference is, is, is how we do our job. The most important thing while we're on this planet is to do 110% as best as we possibly can, whether we're a stay-at-home housewife, whether we're a spouse, whether we're um, uh, an employee, the most important thing is about giving service. And the more service that you can give, the higher level you go when you hit the spirit side. And speaking of vibration, this is going back about seven, maybe eight years ago. I was doing a sitting for a woman, and you know her mother came through, her son came through. And then I kept on looking off to the side, and, I, and she goes, what do you keep on looking at, Tim? I says, well, there's this man on your dad's side. I know it's not your dad. I know it's not your your grandfather. But I, I said, it's, it's, you know, it's actually your uncle. It's your dad's brother. And she goes, well, why do you have that? that puzzled look in your face. And I says, you know, I says, I just don't feel good with his energy. I just don't want to really bring him in. I says, I'm sorry to say that, but this doesn't, doesn't feel right. I don't want to bring him in. I just want to focus on your son and focus on the others. And she says, oh, thank you for saying that. And thank you for not bringing me in. He molested me when I was a kid. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely and having so, that discernment. Yeah. And so that person was basically coming in to just say how wrong he was. And I just said, listen, he's just here to say he's sorry, and he left. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's, the only mo- that's the only thing that's the most that we're able to get out of it, just because we both feel, we, we both felt so uncomfortable with that energy coming through. But whenever I do my work, Cammie, I always do a opening two-minute meditation before I start the work, just to really set the room with the highest amount of, of love and vibration. And when the room is, and when we're finished with the sitting, um, I close with the meditation. And that's just my practice. That's the way I work. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone's different, and that's excellence for you to really bring your individuality into your work. So let's talk a little bit about reincarnation. Uh, How do you see it? What's been your experience with it? Mm -hmm. Well, my belief on reincarnation is, is, first of all, it's very individualistic on the person who passes over. Sometimes, I mean, there are people that will reincarnate right away, um, very, very quick. Um, And I do believe in that, and I have seen that. Uh, many times in sittings, um, but I firmly believe that we reincarnate in soul groups. So, you know, in this lifetime, the mother and father and the brothers and sisters that we have, we actually chose them. And I know a lot of people say, gosh, I must have been drunk on spirit side when I chose my mother. I must have been drunk Mm -hmm. on spirit side when I chose my brother and sister. I can't stand them. Well, the reason why you, you chose them is because they're really your teachers to help you, to help you grow, to help you learn. And then when we all go back to spirit side, sometimes we wait a couple of generations and we wait for that soul group to come over. And that soul group is not always family. Sometimes it could be friends, it could be an employee, sometimes it could be like a lover or it could be um, uh, a spouse of 50 years. It doesn't matter. It's all part of the soul group. And then we, sh- we, we change it up. We switch it all around. And so sometimes, you know, for this lifetime, I'm the son. Next lifetime, I might be a mother. You know, um, we change things up in order to learn as many lessons as we possibly can. That's my belief on it. That's been uh, very similar to my experience in speaking with different deceased individuals. Uh, excuse me, let me back up. Not deceased individuals, but people who come into sessions with me and they're given information in regards to past life information. Um, and many times they'll say, well, Tammy, that's you're describing my life now. You're describing these same issues mm-hmm. or these same types of relationships. And I have found that 
uh, it, just as you stated, that we're, we're always learning. We're always here to learn something. Sometimes our learning is painful, which is unfortunate and never necessary. And sometimes our, our learning is very joyful, but we're constantly learning. And mm -hmm. uh, when we finally get it, when we understand what we're here to learn, then we move on to that next level. And Exactly. You know, some past lives are, are great to know about, and some it doesn't serve a benefit to really go into it, at least in my experience. Mm -hmm. And mine too. You know, sometimes a person will say, you know, a person's a very old soul, and I just start to laugh, and I say, you mean a very slow learner. <laughs> um, and so um, that's my belief on it, is that we keep on coming back um, in, order, in order to get it right. And mm -hmm. sometimes we get it right right away, and sometimes it takes a few lifetimes. But, you know, we keep on using this earth as like a playground, as a school, in order to really study and work hard and get through these things. Yes, absolutely. That's been my experience as well. So let's talk a little bit about suicide. We are in a little bit of an epidemic of suicide, especially amongst certain um, population groups such as uh, mm -hmm. gay and lesbian. So what is your your take on suicide? What's your perception of uh, individuals who choose to take their own life and really what happens after that occurs? Well, as far as, as you mentioned gay and lesbian, it's unfortunate that one-third of, of gay and lesbian and transgendered teens either attempt or succeed at suicide, one-third, um, and that's just a really alarming rate. As far as the servicemen that are coming back from these wars now, the suicide rate in the service is just out of control right now. Um, so I've dealt with a lot of suicides over the years. Um, I tell my clients that when a person commits suicide, you know, instead of chastising that person as some Judeo Christian societies do, we need to go back to what the American Indians believed. And the American Indians believed is when a person committed suicide, they needed to take themselves back home. And so they actually, the American Indians that is, they actually honored that person who committed suicide. They weren't angry with them. Of course, they were sad, but they honored that person. They said, you know what, that person needed to go back home and we just need to accept their decision. Um, and that's my belief on, on, on suicide. Um, but it's very individualistic. Um, sometimes it sets the person back. Um, sometimes it doesn't. But it's very individualistic on the person on what they need to, to learn and what they need to go through. Sometimes that person who commits suicide, such as a baby who passes, it brings the whole community together, it brings a family together stronger. Sometimes it's just the opposite. It brings a family torn apart, and there's a lot of lessons with that. But it's so complex to, you know, to to generalize about suicide. But as I mentioned, and my belief is that we have to honor that person and send that love to that person, saying, "Okay, we we understand your decision. You know, you need to take yourself back home." Mm -hmm. In my experience, most people who have taken their own lives have remained stuck for a period of time as we perceive time here in the physical. And as you know, uh, time is very different in the non-physical. Mm -hmm. So sure. uh, that's been my experience. But you have worked with many more deceased people than I have since that's not... Um, that's not my main focus. My main focus are guides. Mm -hmm. So it, and I agree with you that it is, it's very different for different people, depending on how your life is taken, why it's taken, and that entire process definitely plays a role. Uh, so... And just excuse uh -huh. me real quick, not to interrupt you, but sometimes that stuck energy that you and I both feel, sometimes it's because that person is over there and they regret it. And they don't so much regret it for their own actions. They regret it because of all the feelings of hurt that they have caused. And sometimes they're in that stuck position because they want to make it right. You know, um, did they like that body? No. Did they not want to be in that body anymore? No. But on the other hand, it's like, look how many people that you hurt with this. And it's like, gosh, I really want to get back in that body, but it's too late. I made a mistake. I've seen that many times, too. Other times I've seen a person who's committed suicide and they come through in spirit, and they looked at me and they said, I pulled that trigger and I walked away and I didn't want to be in that body anymore. Then they, mm -hmm. they were very adamant about it. So, again, it's, it's really from, from person to person. But if you can tell your audience, Tammy, whether a person takes their life, you know, takes themselves over, um, or passes for natural causes, when you send that love, that thought to them, they hear it. And it doesn't matter where you send it from. I've had 
the closest connection with spirit in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven convenience store than I have in any cathedral or temple throughout Europe, throughout all the 14 countries that I've been to. I've had that connection in that parking lot because I sent that love from the heart. I sent it from my sincerity to that person I was sending that love to. And if you can tell your clients to send that love to them from your heart, that they will feel it. They will feel it, whether the, to, whether the person committed suicide or whether that person passed a natural causes. If it comes from your heart and you send that love to them, they feel it. They mm. sense it and they see it. Yes, yes, they do to, um, at a certain level, they do. So do you feel that women are more in touch with their intuitive abilities than men? Um, yes, but it's not getting that way so much anymore. I see a lot more men um, getting in touch with their feelings now. Now, still, I mean, women are um, still, I would have to say, about 80%, 80% ahead of men. But, you know, if you look back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, um, there was a lot of men that were never in touch with their feelings. Um, but now it's a little bit more understood, and, and a lot of men have a support group, and it's more socially acceptable to talk about it. So, yes, you're right, more women are, but it, the the men ratio is catching up. And it has been so wonderful talking with you. What is the the message that you want to leave with the listeners to really understand spirituality, mediumship? Well, you know, gratitude. We all have to come back and look at what we're grateful for. And if you can be grateful for at least one thing in your life, um, that's connecting with spirit. Because when you're grateful and you give thanks, spirit gives you more of that. So if you're grateful for something and you say, dear spirit or dear God or dear Mother Mary, thank you for this. I'm so blessed for my kids. I'm so blessed for my husband. When you keep on saying to spirit, thank you, the universe always gives you more. That sounds fabulous and a very, very wonderful message for to leave with the listeners. Where can people find more information on you? Sure. Um, they can go to my website at timbron.net, which is T-I-M-B-R-A-U-N as in Nancy, dot net. And uh, Penelope, who books all my appointments, um, she can take care of any questions or concerns that you might have. Excellent. Well, thank you, Tim, for being a guest on my show today. Oh, thanks, Tammy, and thank you for all the work that you do. You know, you're lifting the vibration of the planet more than you realize, and if there's more people out there like you, this this planet would be a much, much better place. So thank you for what you do. Oh, well, thank you. And I want to thank the listeners for joining me here as well on Journey for Truth on webtalkradio.net. Also, take a moment and visit my website, empowermentthroughhealing.org, and sign up for my free newsletter. Until next time, have a fantastic week.